do a simple uh, stitching a panorama together that was shot handheld with PTGUI Pro. So you load PTGUI Pro. First thing I always do, I click on Advanced. That brings up more options. Now I go to Load Images and I select the images or alternatively you can uh, go to your desktop and find some images you want and uh, select them and drag and drop them. Now these were all shot raw. You can do JPEG or raw. I recommend raw because well raw is way better. Um, and PTGY handles raw so you can actually push and pull the image and brighten it or darken it. And, but if you shoot raw you gotta wait a little while for the images to process so we'll just wait. Okay now it's done uh, importing all of the images. Now I just click align images and wait. Now, if you shot this properly, if all of the images have enough overlap, typically you want to overlap your images about 30%. If there's enough overlap, then PTGUI will just automatically figure out where the images align and automatically stitch them. So we'll just hope that happens. All right, and now it brings up our panorama editor window. This is a separate window, and this shows us what it looks like. We can see that it all stitched together. It didn't give us any errors. And uh, so if we were to click export right now, this whole white checkered part, this would come out as black. This would be uh, black. So what we're gonna do is actually gonna zoom in about. I, can, I could export exactly as it is now, or if I move these sliders, here you see I can kind of zoom in a bit and kind of get rid of some of this dead space, this white space on the end. Now of course by zooming in I'm losing perspective down here. Alternatively I can crop from the left and right like that and like this, zoom in a bit. I can uh, hold down control and I can rotate the image a bit. I can also just click and I can just move up a bit like this. But of course by doing that now my horizon isn't straight. By default it wants to have a straight horizon. Now also I can go up here. Now typically it's going to default to equal rectangular. There's different ways of displaying a panorama. Uh, this is an example I could go to rectilinear and that projects the image as if it was shot with uh, a normal lens, a rectilinear lens. Uh, Fisheye lenses or circular lenses have the curved edges. This is going to try to give you the straight lines like you shoot with a normal lens. But you see it actually looks weird. So we're going to go back to echo rectangular. There, that looks good. And uh, let me zoom in a little more. There we go, that looks good. And uh, now we're going to go to... So this is what I like. I might zoom in more. I'm happy with this. So now... I'm going to go, because it all stitched perfect, there were no problems, no errors, I'm just going to go to Create Panorama, and here I choose Maximum Size, or say this is too big, I might choose it just to be 10,000 pixels or whatever, but I want it to be Maximum. Quality, if you set it to 100, it's going to create a gigantic file, so I set it usually about to 90. And uh, you just hit Create Panorama and it'll export your panorama and you're done. Okay, so we're done. Now I'm going to show you if a couple things had gone wrong, here's what these other tabs are for. So we stitched our images together and it looked good, but let's say two of these images, let's say two of the images here didn't work. As an example, if you have a perfect blue sky all the way through or a perfect white sky, then the difference between this image and this image is nothing and it may not know how to stitch them. So if you shoot your images with like a gigapan or robotic head, you can go to Project Aligned Grid, and that will, and here you can say I shot two rows of four columns and I had 20% overlap, hit apply, and it will just force the images to line up the way you want it to. If that doesn't work, um, then you're going to have to manually do control points. And so 
Let's go to the control points. What that means is that this point here, number 10, lines up with 10. And what you can do is you can manually say this point, click, lines up with this point. And if it automatically knows where it does it, you just click and it'll automatically say here, and it automatically does a point. But if it doesn't know how to automatically do it, then you have to s click here, here. So here we're looking at image zero and one, and then I move to the image. I think the ones that are bold are the ones that could use more uh, control points. So between two and three, um, I could say that this point here lines up with this point. And you can just manually go click, click, and then you move on to say image four and five. And I can say the top of this building, boop, lines up with here. And so you just go next, 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 next through all the images. And then when you're done that, you can go back to Project Assistant, hit Align Images, and it will realign them, and it'll take your control points into consideration, and uh, hopefully it all comes out well. Um, other buttons. The Optimizer, I don't even know what this does. I just click Run Optimizer, and it says it's good or bad. Um, also handy is the mask. So mask is if, say, say you take two pictures, and in one picture, a person walks through the frame. But on, say, the, le so the right photo has a person. The left photo doesn't have a person. Well, what I can do is I can click on the, the uh, red paintbrush, and I can, let's pretend there's a person here. Let me go to stigma. I would, like, highlight, I would basically put red over the person I don't want. And then on the other side of the image, I would take green and say, this is the picture where there isn't a, a person. I would take that and I would paint over that person. Oh, here we're looking at the same image. So here's zero and one. So let's say on this image, I would say, this is the part that I want to keep. And on the other image, I'd say, oh, there's a person here. I don't want that person. I would paint over that person with red. And so what that does is it says, use this part of the image, but don't use this part. And that's, that's basically it. Um, to undo all this, I'll just use the clear brush. There we go. And uh, cropping, cropping is the same kind of thing. You can crop out a part of an image, or let's say you don't want to use the full frame. By default, you want to use all of the frame. Uh, this is also if, good if you're using a fisheye lens, because the fisheye lens, say it's like a full circular lens, you want to use just the middle part of the lens, you don't want to use the black border. Um, okay, and that's basically it. Exposure HDR, if you shot RAW or if you shot bracketed JPEGs, this is you can use this to uh, blend HDR images together and get more dynamic range. Uh, it works with RAW, so you can click here and you can actually um, can actually get more compression and like make the image look weird or good, whatever. Um, I haven't played with this much. Automatic exposure, you can click here and it'll automatically do that. Expo this is handy. If for some reason you have to shoot your image in auto exposure, you should always shoot manual exposure. But if for some reason you have to shoot in auto, this will make it so that say one of your frames is too dark, it'll brighten that frame to match the other ones. And probably all you should have to worry here is you can bump up the exposure. So again, let's look at our preview. Um, see, look, I can pump my exposure up. I could also, if the image was too red, I could take out some red or add some blue. So this is kind of handy. And another good reason why it's good to shoot with RAW because it's going to look a lot nicer if you adjust the exposure. You can push or pull like that. So say let's bump it about 1.3. And uh, that's basically it. The other, other thing, it should auto detect your lens panorama settings. If for some reason it doesn't work proper, you can change this. Um, it should always default to echo rectangular. If it doesn't, I choose echo rectangular. Or sometimes I might want a rectilinear or flat image. So we're done. We go here, we click create panorama, and uh, we wait for it to export. The bigger the image, the more pixels, the um, 
longer it will take, or the slower your computer, the longer it will take. Uh, a quick way to calculating this, launch your calculator. If you just want to know how big this image is going to be, 22,254 times 11337 gives us 252 megapixels. 252 million pixels, so 252, mi 252 megapixel image. Click create and we're done. Oh, and save. Always save.